we want to talk about today is owning your conversational AI journey. We have here virtually Laura from Circle K, <laughs> we have Anne from CGI, and we have Roger from Swisscom, and they're all here to talk about their conversational AI journey. So there's sort of the meat of the presentation. I'm just going to be introducing and running it. And here you see our beautiful faces, um, all nice and white and red. I don't, uh, yellow and red, I'm not sure why. Yellow and blue. Artificial solutions, we have a platform which you can use to develop, collaborate, and refine and run your solutions together with Microsoft products. So it's something that you build together with Microsoft Azure, Microsoft Lewis. You use our platform to build your uh, AI. This has been around for 20 odd years, which means we have a lot of patents and a lot of technology behind it. Uh, and we also have a lot of large customers and great partners across the world. And without further ado, I'm gonna say, for those of you who were on the, the stand before, you've probably all seen this already, AI is important, profitable companies, the thing that McKinsey found is that profitable companies that have profitable growth also have profitable AI projects. And they also have a board which is committed to AI and they committed resources. And that's what you will find from Circle K and what you will find from Swisscom. Our product is called Lewis to the Power to Neo and that's the basis of these uh, solutions. So um, we're gonna move to Circle K and uh, they built scalable multilingual chatbots. They're gonna go voice uh, in the next phase of this. And Laura is gonna tell us a bit about how this has worked out for them. Hi, my name is Laura. I'm currently working as a senior specialist for operations and digital customer service solutions. Uh, uh, Circle K is a global company that operates across multiple uh, regions. So it's really important to provide excellent customer experience in all regions and every interaction with us, be it our products and services or the customer service. Uh, and that could be live customer service or the FAQs and information available on our webpage. And uh, one part, a big part of the operational excellence is improving our resolution speed. Uh, customers expect fast and excellent service, no matter the channel. Right now we have, uh, chatbots available on our Scandinavian website, that would be Norwegian, Danish and Swedish website that can answer general questions about both B2B and B2C topics. And then we also have a chatbot available uh, on our North America side for a specific service that is reachable from an app. Uh, this was a really important decision point for us because we knew that we needed the chatbot to work uh, in different regions uh, and it needed to be a scalable solution. So we chose the master local solution. That means that we have a master solution in English that we design uh, the flow, design scene, uh, add any script that we need and then it's possible to branch it into different local solutions. And then we have our local developers that come in and localize those solutions, add uh, any region specific uh, knowledge inside, uh, everything that changes, brand names, uh, prices, things like that. Um, but they don't need to redesign every flow that's coming from the master. So it's a lot easier to work with. And we can have uh, a few master local solutions. So we could have one for website. We could have one for a specific app if needed. And we knew that this app needs to be in a, a lot of countries. Uh, so this is a really scalable and easy to work with solution for us in Circle K. In the last fiscal year, we have had more than 100,000 conversations together in all the Scandinavian countries. Um, I would say this is almost 10% of all the interactions we have. Um, so the, this is quite a lot. And this is a load that we have taken from the live customer service, be it emails or um, phone calls. And uh, we also track our issue completion rate. That would be the, all the issues that we have identified and uh, have answered uh, uh, our, or the conversation has gone till its natural end. 
So we have uh, almost 80% issue completion rate in the identified conversation. So it means that we have successfully uh, understood the customer and could give them the answer uh, we have uh, designed in the flow. So uh, we have different apps in different markets that are available for customers. And that would be a place we would want to implement our chatbots to give them uh, direct access in the app to troubleshoot anything, uh, answer all the questions about the product they are using, and if needed, uh, have a live ch chat connection straight from the app. Um, of course, also different integrations uh, are in plans with our internal systems. Uh, it's also possible to, to, in the future, maybe integrate the, the chatbots with uh, uh, loyalty programs and customer loyalty profiles. Um, so things like that are in plans for us. Excellent. Thank you, Laura. So they're rolled out in Scandinavia, 10% of the load on customer support. They're rolling out in North America as we speak. It is the second biggest retailer across the Americas. So uh, we expect that volume to be uh, a bit higher in the Americas than it is in Scandinavia. Our second guest today is Roger. Uh, Roger comes from Swisscom, which, uh, for, as you probably all know, is the largest telco operator in Switzerland and also probably the highest quality in Europe. So over to you, Roger. Thank you. Um, thank you, Pierre. Just need to click. I guess I need to click. Oh, you need the microphone click should already be <laughs> working. Thanks so much. So yeah, my name is Roger Dill. Um, I am a, the product owner for uh, dialogue management systems. Um, I'm going to show you later how we built it, what we built, and uh, but first a couple of figures about Swisscom. As you can see, we are dealing with a whole lot of different topics. Uh, Switzerland's largest telecommunication company, but also one of its leading IT outsourcing companies. We serve 2.75 million customers, private customers, and we offer broad ranges of outsourcing services like connect connectivity, uh, server hosting, and so on, to small, middle enterprises and corporate customers. Swisscom currently has about 19,300 uh, employees, and we generate a yearly revenue of 11 billion euro. So in today's presentation, I want to show you how we apply conversational AI in our products and uh, what we have achieved so far, which is probably the most interesting part. Uh, let me take you to uh, a first overview of our environment. So the requirements of the platform were, multi, uh, were multifaceted. As you can see, we wanted to have voice channels being handled by it, as well as text-based channels. So um, we have a multitude of components, ASR, NLP components, you name it, and dialogue management, of course, um, which were also required to support four languages, since you know uh, Swiss Switzerland has French, um, German, French, Italian, and English as the main languages. And there's a specialty with German, in fact, because the Swiss German is not just a mere dialect, but it's almost a language of its own with almost no rules. There are no grammatical rules whatsoever. There is actually no written language, which makes the whole thing more complicated. Um, but normally, our customers interact with us in high German, especially on the text channel. So that was particularly a problem for, for the ASR. Now, the sum uh, of all these requirements, we also wanted to use um, data to provide personalized services, um, whatever context data you could think of, whether a customer has an open order or not. Uh, we also want to use that to make the experience better. So the sum of all that led us to actually build a platform consisting of best of breed uh, components, which you can get off the market, combined also with homegrown components. And um, that's... Uh, the main topic that, um, or, or the main requirements that we had. Now, what do we do? I already mentioned it a bit. We have um, the chatbot, 
And we have a conversational IVR, which is a voice-based uh, application. Basically, customers call in on our support line and are then routed to the right agent. And we also got the voice assistant. This is similar to um, whatever you get on Alexa, Google Nest, or something like that, which is installed on our TV set-top box. And um, some figures, um, on the chat channel, we have an average of 27,000 sessions per month. Um, we support SMS, WhatsApp, Apple Business Chat, and our website chat. And we will soon be integrating the Swisscom app um, as, a, as another client. Then with the conversational IVR, we manage to handle all incoming calls to our hotline. So in the last six months, we had uh, 1.8 million calls, in fact, which went through this platform. And the TV voice assistant, as I said, it's installed on the set-top boxes. We handle 200,000 active boxes and about 70,000 requests per day. Now, on the next two slides, I want to take you through um, the customer care segment and give you some insight, first of all, into the conversational IVR. I'm sure you all know the experience. You call 1-800-1234-56789, and then you are being told a menu. And many of you remembered this you were distracted. So at the end of the menu, you had to listen to it all over again. Or you were absolutely unsure which button to press because, um, well, do I, do I really have a problem with my invoice uh, or, or do I not? Um, or for example, a, 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 a phone is not working anymore. This could be because you didn't pay your bill, right? It could also be a technical issue. So what number, what button to press, do I press now? There was, um, leading to quite a big number of calls that needed to be transferred from one agent queue to the other. Now what we did is, um, to solve these obvious problems, we launched the conversational IVR in 2021. We asked the user to tell us in one or two sentences why he's calling today, and basically uh, analyze what he's saying through NLP, NLU and route him to the right agent queue. We were actually able to ramp this up to 100% of the call load, as I already mentioned, within three weeks. And um, what's more impressive is actually we could improve the transfers with the initial set of training we made, all the intent models we had from the day we took it live performed 21% better than, the, um, th than where we came from, the, the, the keypad selection, right? And um, having said that, it's even more interesting to understand, to see that the net promoter score actually inc uh, went up. So the users seemed to be happy. Of course, there were a few users who said, oh, Swisscom is, uh, is now collecting my data, or, or um, this is too, too um, uh, how do they handle the privacy uh, of my voice and all that stuff. But I think as we go, customers will get used to that and use their voice, and they will also learn and adapt how to deal with, with, with the system. And honestly speaking, when I call into my insurance company or whatever, and I still have to select from, uh, from the button menu, I think, oh my goodness, why are, why are these companies so way back? Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> right. So um, next step is to also automate stuff on the voice channel. As I said, right now we're mainly routing the agents, but we've already, uh, we are already able to answer simple questions. If we detect something that could be answered by an FAQ, for example, we offer the user to receive an SMS with a link to an appropriate page. And um, this works quite well, and we're obvi we obviously want to work on that, invest some more time and money there to make the experience even more seamless and uh, faster for the users. Now, um, the second deep dive into um, our chatbot. What we have started with was a chatbot which was more or less um, just 
intent-based, non-conversational, and we realized that very often these intents were not correctly de uh, detected at first. So um, there is a big necessity to actually ask questions, right? To disambiguate, to understand, is it this or is it rather that? Because sometimes the models are confused. So um, what we did then, we introduced what we call a concierge bot, a, a, a overall bot that actually handles three main systems. The overall bot handles the technical support, it handles for simple questions an FAQ and retrieval system, and it also handles intent-driven conversational flows. Now for the technical support, it is important to understand when uh, we have a broad range of stuff that we can measure. If a customer calls in or writes an SMS, I don't have internet connection at home, we can start to measure his connection until the router. If we can reach the router, everything's fine, and then we can guide the user how to solve the problem by himself. If, um, for example, this cannot be solved automatically, we can then ask uh, the user to provide us with a time slot when he is available at home so we can send a technician around. All this is being done automated, um, increasing a uh, number of use cases. Um, currently, uh, currently, we still have the moment where we jump off to a website, but we are currently working on integrating this also into the bot, so we have a seamless um, functionality here. Now for the retrieval system, we've got currently about 180 FAQ use cases. As I told you in the beginning, we've got a multitude of topics that we cover, so it's really important um, to have, uh, to, to address the long tail of answers or long tail of questions which you don't want to build a conversational flow for. So um, we were able to automate a lot of inquiries by just giving the customer the appropriate um, uh, link to a FAQ page. And last but not least, we've got fully automated co chat conversations. Users can um, order new SIM cards, replacement SIM cards. User can can uh, extend their payment deadline if they are not able to pay right now, and so on and so on. So you see the figures. Um, basically, everything is a real success within one year. Um, so and so much increase. Uh, we were actually, to be honest, quite surprised. Now to conclude. Um, Language is the most powerful, useful, and effective, com effective communication technology ever. Um, as Golden Krishna titled his book, The Best Interface is No Interface, this is what we believe too. Yeah. So our main takeaways for, uh, for today and from our journey is conversational AI actually works well, and it is worth investing in it. Mm. Customers are happier while we can actually save costs. And the journey has just started. There is still a lot of potential to unveil, and I'm glad to be a part of this journey. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'll hand over to Anne. Excellent, so I'm, I will hand over to Anne. All so right. Excellent, Roger, thank you very much. I uh, really, really uh, appreciate this journey, and also one of the things is that I actually asked uh, uh, one of the, the, the CXOs at Swisscom, if we could do some external use cases, and he said, no, let's focus on these internal first and make sure that they work, which I think is that commitment that you need. Mm -hmm. So it's really, 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 really well done. And it's been a journey of two years, three years? Two, two and a half years, yeah. Two, two and a half years. Yep. Excellent. We're Thank gonna you. hand it over to, if you don't have internal resources, which Roger has, uh, then you're probably gonna need to start with a partner and help you set up a center of excellence. and. Uh, Anne is here to tell you a bit about more about the journey together with CGI. Thank you. Hi, everyone. As, uh, as Per mentioned, I'm from CGI. And for anyone not familiar with us, I like to joke that we're kind of the best kept secret in IT. We're actually one of the biggest IT companies in the world. Um, and that gives you a kind of idea of our global scope. But unlike some of our competitors, we trade on our results and our reputation rather than taking out giant billboards, naming no names. OK, so journeys. Journeys tend to be more successful when you're clear about where you want to go and how you're going to get there. And talking to someone who's been there 
is always going to be better than any guidebook you could read. You shouldn't limit your horizons either. So today I wanted to bust some conversational AI myths about what you can and can't use conversational AI for. OK, so a lot of people believe that uh, you know, you're always going to get a better experience from a customer services agent. And OK, if you had a limitless supply of people working 24-7 who, who are not in any way overstretched and could always answer the phone within three rings, yeah, maybe. But uh, we all know that life isn't like that. I've spent a lot of lockdown myself on hold to companies wishing I could talk to their CTOs about putting some conversational AI in for them, you know, 90 minutes later, still on hold. So yeah, I think, I think that one can be challenged. Similarly, uh, I think people look at conversational AI through the lens of what it could do maybe five, 10 years ago. The technology has moved on a really long way. And conversational AI can do a lot more than just answer your questions, as, uh, as we were covering earlier. The, uh, the ability to actually have it automate tasks for you in the background, have it actually allow customers to completely self-serve is there now, it is real, it is completely doable. Another one that's common is people think conversational AI is just chatbots. Uh, and I think you debunked that pretty thoroughly already, but you know, <laughs> it can talk to you on WhatsApp. SMS, on the phone, Facebook Messenger, sky's the limit, email even. I mean, it's an unusual use case, but people still uh, send a lot of email in the world. I should build conversational AI into my applications. Mm. This is a common thing we see is people try to, to enclose conversational AI within their app, but really it's an enterprise level capability. If you're putting this in, you want to be able to put it in across your system estate, it's your, it's, your, it's your single lens into how you speak to your customer. No, you know, no complicated portal where I'm searching around for what, you know, what I need to fill in. Just a simple conversational layer that can interact with your back-end systems. I just need to pick the right software. Controversial, perhaps. But there are a lot of good conversational AI platforms out there. Obviously, uh, we at CGI do, do a rather great artificial solutions, which is why we're here today. But part of it... Part of it is picking that, but also a large chunk of it is just understanding your use cases, making sure you've really picked the right things to tackle first, the things that will really drive value for your customer, that you're taking a data-driven approach to find those things, to make sure that you're really doing the right things, and also that you're designing conversational experience as well. Because with the best tool in the world, you can design a terrible conversational experience. OK, so <laughs> this may seem like an odd slide, but if you're, if you're going on a journey, you also want to know where not to go. <laughs> Infinite looping, oh, yeah. Um, bad, I, mean, I think we've all seen ex examples of bad chatbots. And getting stuck on a question and giving no, no way to, to get out of it um, is, is a very painful experience. I think no, no more needed to be said. Not building an escape route. Now, this is kind of related, but there will be times when your user just wants to talk to a person, and that's OK. The, the, the conversational AI should try and help them, but it shouldn't, it shouldn't what's the word, it shouldn't prevent them from, from getting to what they're trying to do. If they want to speak to a person, they should be able to speak to a person. Uh, here's another one that really bugs me when, I, when I've used chatbots that aren't great. Um, you've given information and it's, it's effectively thrown away. Either the, the conversational AI doesn't remember it, or it passes you off to a live person, and they don't have access to any of it. Again, over-promising. So yeah, I can solve all of your problems. Um, that's probably going to just lead to some disappointment along the way. If you're clear about what it can and can't do, that's going to be better for you and give a better experience. Expectation management is a good thing. You're able to detect frustration and sentiment in, in NLP these days. So failing to take advantage of that and actually deal with frustration and uh, that, the kind of language that indicates that when you're experiencing it is, again, a bit of a, bit of a mistake. And yeah, we, as I said earlier, not automating the right use cases. Now, here's another little bugbear from, from my perspective. If it's an end customer facing thing, an approach that's essentially using auto translation under the covers, is never going to deliver quite the same experience as something that is designed to be sort of native speaker. I mean, maybe, maybe in 20 years, when Google has spent all of the money um, and all of the processing power, it might. But that's one of the real strengths of, of Teneo as a platform, is how, how 
there are no second class languages. And I, I personally, I think that's very important for customer facing applications in particular. OK, what should you be looking for in a conversational AI platform? What do we look for? Um, obviously, accurate intent recognition. I mean, we've talked, we talked about this earlier. It, that's super important. You, if you've got overlapping intents, you want to be sure that those are cleanly understood and you're not going down the wrong path. Something that's quick to configure and maintain. And I think the and maintain in many ways is more important because you're going to spend a lot more time maintaining what you put in than you are going to spend putting it in. So you want a tool that's going to be really easy to maintain as well as to initially uh, put in. And that's very important. Obviously, being able to easily integrate with things. Uh, and that's front end connectors in terms of you know, channels to speak to the customer. But it's also your back end systems and third party systems. You, know, you, you, know, you want to send a message to your CRM system about the fact you've had a conversation with a customer, stuff like that. Again, you want a platform that's going to be extensible, scalable, something that is going to you know, give all of the needs of your business, support your whole business, rather than just solve this one little problem over here. You want a nice, clean separation of the machine learning and the speech recognition from the actual conversational dialogues. The reason for this is this technology is moving, moving, moving. And you want to be able to switch those things out as, as other better things come in without having to throw away all of your conversational dialogues and start again. You want, a, you, know, you want a clean architectural separation. That is going to defend you from the future as best, it, as best you can. You want to be able to remember con context. We talked about that already. And also the ability to handle interruptions and then resume smoothly. So if you divert off to a path, the, the ability to cleanly resume. Because people do, in natural conversation, wander off in different directions. Yeah, and I, uh, a point I made earlier, no second class languages. Right, OK. Now, six things you didn't know you could use conversational AI for. Outbound contacts. A lot of people think it's all about inbound, but it's a really powerful thing for being able to reach out to people, particularly through messaging, because I think maybe outbound IVR can be a bit intrusive. But outbound WhatsApp, outbound SMS, you can have a two-way conversation instead of just sending an email or a letter, which may get ignored. Being able to use uh, multi-channel, I think we, we talked about all the different kinds of connectors, but voice assistants, um, the, you know, voice isn't all about IVR, voice assistants, Alexa, Google Assistant, all that good stuff. Responding to emails. I mean, email is an old channel, but there is still a hell of a lot of email sent in the world. What if your top 10 customer services queries that arrived in your email inbox were handled by your, your NLP engine? Now, this probably takes some technology in partnership with Taneo, and that's where uh, CGI really comes to its fore as a systems integrator. We're all about the inter intelligent automation space, and I'll, more of that in a moment. Um, supporting live agents by listening to the customer. That's another good use case, because it's not just about being able to directly speak to a customer. Anyone who stops by our stand can see an example of that. Uh, and we're, we're, where are we? We are at um, 434, aren't we? 444. 444. OK, my bad. Um, using sentiment analysis and linguistic understanding to identify potentially vulnerable customers. That's particularly a big thing in financial services, but it should be a thing in any customer services. And yeah, in, integrating with intelligent automation tools. So if RPA are the ha is the hands of your robot, NLP can be the brains. And putting some of these technologies together, machine reading, open banking, RPA, you can build comprehensive solutions that can genuinely take people out of the loop and deliver real value. OK, we have a, a give it a try. So anyone with a phone here can just scan that QR code and have a play. And this actually also works if you're online. So you can actually scan your screen. Yeah, you literally can scan your screen. Anyone who uh, wants will have that up at the booth as well. But some parting shots. Building a center of excellence, you know, think about this as, as, your, as some, that is something your business should be able to do across the board. Start small, and that is the important point, start. Uh, we all know how well a single leap works in the cartoons. You hit the wall and you slide down. But, but start as well. Don't be paralyzed by thinking it's too big to tackle. Start small and, and you know, expand. And this is the thing. Customers, customers might say in surveys, oh, yeah, I want to speak to a live person. I want to speak to a live person. But really, I want to get my problem solved and quickly. I don't care how it got done. It got solved. And conversational AI is the answer to that. It, is, it never gets tired. 
It scales a lot easier than a person. It's a lot faster to train than you know an army of people, and it will always it will always uh, pay for itself. Okay, I'll hand back to Pear. Thank you, Anne. And uh, to wrap this up a bit, we um, we're all about creating conversations. It's about Lewis to the power to Neo is the platform we're using. You've seen uh, that uh, moving from chat to voice, like Swisscom has done, has exploded the, uh, both the customer satisfaction and the volumes that uh, actually get resolved for customers. So if you're ready to take your, CA, your conversational AI journey, I suggest that you come and find us at the stand. If you have any questions here, you're free to post those as well. I think online you can't really do that. And in here, it's mostly competitors and partners, so I don't, uh, I don't foresee too many questions coming from here. You can also scan this QR code to learn more about Lewis to the Power to Neo. So if there's no questions, I suggest you take the last two minutes and run out to our booth, 444, right on the floor. Thank you all.